Welcome to Life in a Headlock. I am Pepper Jack Jones, and you are? Renegade. Joey Abel. All right. Hey, on all the other interviews, you come from outside somewhere and come sit down. Why are you already sitting here with me? I got lucky and had somebody push oh, the button this okay. time. Okay, I'm just asking. Well, uh, I'm going to be honest, like you just brought this up, but uh, this is take two of our interview because I was at a show, and I uh, kind of interviewed you and Jeremiah Plunkett, and was trying to transfer it to the card, and I deleted both of them. He didn't want my interview. He but, didn't want y'all to see it, people. But like I said, if I screw up, I admit to it. So, well, here we go. One more time. Let's try it. One more again. time. And I actually got like two new questions. So you got a little more. Answer. Awesome. Let's go. All right. Well, uh, who trained you to be in pro wrestling? <coughs> ah, who trained me? I would say I have. We'll say two trainers. In 2003, I met this guy by the name of Brian Rival. We worked at Walmart together. I worked in a deli. He worked in the produce section. And I never really talked to him, but I kept noticing he was disappearing for like 30 minutes at a time, and then he'd come back. Well, I called him one day in the magazine section and uh, got his attention. I'm like, man, what are you doing? He said, I'm reading a book. What book are you reading? I'm reading Ric Flair's book. I'm like, Ric Flair? I'm like, man, I love wrestling. And he's like, really? So we got to chat and he said, uh, I'm actually training to be a professional wrestler. Well, at this time, I had no clue about independent wrestling or anything outside of what was WCW or WWE. So I told him he was full of crap. <laughs> and uh, he said, no, really, I'm training to be a professional wrestler in Waynesboro, Mississippi. He said, you should come down there with me. I'm down. I love it. Let's go try it out. So with the Waynesboro, Mississippi, met a guy by the name of Nick Wonder. He uh, took me to the ring, showed me how to bump, little fundamental stuff, bumping, running road, stuff like that. Got deployed to Iraq, came back from Iraq, met up with a guy by the name of Jesse Dalton at the Battle Zone in McGee, Mississippi. I uh, already knew how to bump, so I guess I was ahead of the learning curve, as they wanted to say. Because most people go through the chop shop and get beat up and all this mess. Uh, yeah, I got to skip that, uh, so I thought I was, oh, this is awesome. Your first match. Yeah, I don't need to get beat up. And uh, so that was it, Nick Warner and Jesse Dalton. All right. Well, how hard was your actual training? Was there anything you had problems learning? When I was training with Nick Warner and them, they, they didn't have any formal training themselves, so they didn't know. They bought the ring from a, a church wrestling federation, and those guys trained themselves. So all we did was go in there and just bump around, and we had this big – roll a carpet pad that was taped up and we slammed it and we'd do moves on it or whatever. It was just a big hangout session. When I got there with Jesse Dalton, <clears throat> when we did train, I watched some movies and uh the bowling? We didn't go bowling. I didn't like get the bowling. Ball? <laughs> I heard about the football Baseball? and the bowling now. Nah. But uh we, we watched a lot of did a lot of homework. Uh but when I did train I would say it's pretty intense. Uh, Jesse's not a cardio machine by no means, yeah, but bump the hell out he, 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 he likes bumping. So, so we bumped a crap ton. And I was in the military, so I think I pissed Pharaoh off, excuse me. Made Pharaoh mad one night. And he was going to make me run suicides. Oh, you're going to run till you can't run no more. Well, after about 30 minutes, he got tired of watching me run. And he's like, we can't even, we can't even make him throw up. I'm like, well, you know, I just got out of basic training, so... And on the deployment, so I'm good to go with running. You can run so. from bullets. You can run a rope. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, who inspired you to get into pro wrestling? Was it a wrestler or a family member? Who was it? I grew up watching it with my father. Mm -hmm. And I don't know one particular person that got that influenced me. I mean, I, I was obsessed with it all. But, uh you're going to ask the question a little while, so I'll wait until we talk about that. But I, I, would say, I would say Brian Rival is probably my greatest influence of getting into professional wrestling. He doesn't, <clears throat> he doesn't wrestle anymore, and uh, he actually told me one day, I'd been wrestling two or three years, and he had quit. He's like, man, I'm going to be honest. I thought you was just going to, you know, I'll go and try it out. He's like, I realized you was going to be, you know, as decent as you are. And he said, I thought it was going to be a flash in the pan, and here I am 13 years later. Well, uh, how did you get your wrestling name, or is it your God-given name? My wrestling name come from a bunk mate at basic training. It was an Italian guy. He was from Texas. His name was Joey Abel Patino. And he said it, like I said, I already bumped and everything, so I had an idea 
working through names. And I'm like, dude, that sounds like a wrestling name. And I said, when I get back, I'm using it. And he said, well, if you ever get famous, just remember me. And uh, I've actually talked to him a couple of times since then. And uh, he's still in the military. So am I. So, yeah, but I hadn't made it famous, so I'm not giving you no royalty. Well, I got to ask you a question about another 9100 just one time. I'm just curious where it come from because I really don't know. I know where the last name come from. <coughs> <laughs> but as Dinky Dalton, where the hell did the Dinky part come from? Of course, Dalton was uh, the late Frank Dalton, and you know, uh, can't think of his name, name right now. His son. Oh, uh, see, I went. I just drew a blank. Oh my God, you made me draw one. The one that uh, Andy Dalton. Andy with. Dalton. Yeah. Andy uh, Jesse took that name, and I was gonna come in as Jesse's brother, and I, I was scared to get in front of the microphone and do anything. So uh, Jim Williamson Pop, who was uh, Jesse Dalton's father, real father. He's a widow maker. We were in there <clears throat> goofing around one day. And it, this is going to be bad. There was a guy that worked at Walmart with us, with me and Rival. He was kind of a slower fella. And he always used to invite us to this cookout at his house. And he'd always tell us, Mama's going to have some peanuts. We're going to have a peanut bowl. So I was at the battle zone that day, making fun of this kid, which is bad as it is, making fun of this kid, and Pop's like, hey, come in the locker room. So we go in the locker room, and he gives me this purple sequin vest with jewels all over it, and he stuffs toilet paper down my pants and it's hanging out. He's like, go out there and talk about your mama, be inbred, and do that. And I came through the curtain and did it one time. Jesse didn't even know what I was doing. And they were in the ring rolling. They said, that's it, you're Dinky Dalton. And, that, and that's where it comes from. He just come out the top and say, "Okay." I really was curious about that. Yeah, I'm oh. sorry, Bill. I didn't mean to make fun of you. It's, it's, it'll be all right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, I kind of reverse this. This is one of the new questions. But so, what was your first match? Tell me a little about it. The first match that I was in, I've been training at the Battle Zone probably four months, mm -hmm. and they were short some guys. And uh, they was like, hey, you got your mask and your overalls with you? Yeah, yeah. You going to have a match tonight? Oh, shit. I ain't ready to have a match tonight. <laughs> All I did was bump. I don't know how to do nothing else. Bump. We bumped for four months. Oh, you're going to have a match tonight. Okay. So I'm Dinky Dalton. I'm a big metal head. So I'm like, what am I going to come out to music? So I got some kill switch engaged metal music <laughs> in overalls and this mask with some peanuts. And I was healed. And I wrestled a guy by the name of Shane Coates. Shane was younger than me at the time, but I think he'd been, they did some backyard stuff when he was 15, 16. He'd been, he'd been wrestling a while. I was like, go out there, you're going over. And I'm thinking, how am I going over on this guy? And he's been wrestling for a few years now. I ain't even got damn interest in music. I don't even know. So they was like, okay, just go out there. Well, like I said, I didn't have a clue. I'm twice Shane's size. We get in the ring, we lock up. He hip toss, arm drag, body slam me. I powder out. Walk to the curtain, Jesse Dalton's in the curtain. Hey, why the hell did you let him body slam you? He's half your size. I'm like, I don't know. He said, go back in the ring and finish it right now. So I slid back in the ring, kicked him in the gut, hit him with the muscle buster, and I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was it, one, two, three. It lasted like 30 seconds. And uh, I get in the back and they chewed me and him both out for me letting him body slam me, but I didn't know any different. Gotcha. But I know now. Nothing like getting thrown to the camera right Well, I mean, camera. we was in training, and Pharaoh was Shane coat size, and he body slammed me all the time, so I didn't think nothing else about it. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, what's your favorite match from TV to watch? One that you go back <coughs> to the state? I have two personal favorites. Um, my first is in 2005. It's an unbreakable three-way between Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, and Christopher Daniels. Um... The Bound for Glory pay-per-view in 2005, there was a, on the pre-show, there was a four-way. It had Austin Aries, Roger Strong, Sanjay Dutt, and oh my goodness, why can I not think of who the fourth guy was? Alex Shelley. They had a little before pre-show match, mm -hmm. and I was in Iraq, and I bought that DVD, and that's what made me realize I'm going back to be, I'm going back to finish this training, I'm going to be a wrestler. But I watched the Unbreakable Three Way and it just mesmerized me. The guys were in, in tune, in sequence, everything was perfect to me. And then the second one was WrestleMania 19, Michaels and Jericho. I, I'm not a big Michaels fan. I, I love what he did for the business and, and the man he was in the ring, but I just didn't 
I didn't care for it. It was kind of slow to me. I didn't care for it. But Jericho is my all-time favorite worker. And him and Michaels always go together. And WrestleMania 19, probably my favorite match ever. I love that match because he hugs him and then he kicks him right in the balls. I was like, that was perfect. Thank you, bam. Yeah. Love, love. All right. Well, uh, what is your favorite match that you yourself have been in? <coughs> Man, I've had, a, I've had a couple that kind of stand out to me. Uh, it's probably been three or four years ago. And I never, I never had that moment where I went in the back of the locker room and I was like, oh, you know, that was perfect. Everything was amazing. We were in the Kiln, Mississippi, working a show for Chris Black. Mm -hmm. And I walked in and they were like, you're working a guy by the name of Outcast. I knew Outcast for a while. Now I worked him in a tag match a few years before. And uh, all I knew about Outcast was he was super stiff. And I'd heard them bitching for weeks, like, oh, man, I don't want to work outcast. Well, I'm not working outcast. And here I walk in, and they're like, hey, you're working outcast. And I'm like, well, hell, I don't want to work outcast. I don't know y'all don't work outcast. And uh, they're like, man, you, you, you're kind of snug, too. You should be okay in there with them. I'm like, okay, well, outcast, I'm a bigger guy. Outcast is twice my size. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, damn, I'm finna get the hell beat out of me. Is this going to turn into a shoot? Or we're going to be out there fighting for real? Uh, went, talked about a few things, went and had the match. When we walked through the locker room, he went through first, he was healed. <clears throat> when I walked in, we just hugged each other, we were both in tears. And it was, it was like, man, we just had magic out there. And the fans knew that the fans were like, oh, that was freaking awesome. And the guys in the back sitting there waiting on me like, did he stiff you? Did he, what happened? And uh, we're hugging each other and they're like, what the hell are they doing? You know, they're hugging each other. We all usually running from him by the time we get in the locker room. And uh, it was just perfect, man. It, I can't really describe it. I don't know the date or anything, but I remember that. Well, they booked it again the following week in McGee. And uh, I guess they thought one of us had bumped our head or something. Like, I, uh, Joey's not going to have his match with him again. And, and it was the same thing, man. We come through the curtain and hugged again. And it was just magic. Other than that, I've had one match with Jesse Dalton. We had a bunch of hardcore matches, but I had one with him. Uh, I want to say it was a New Year's show. We did like a special New Year's show at Battle Zone. And this table is set out back, wood table is set out back for months. It got dry rotted and it, oh, was, it would harden up and it would dry rot. And we, had, we was having a decent match. He sets the table up. I go up to the top rope and he flare bumps me off of it. When I hit this table, it exploded like a grenade. Like, Shards of wood went everywhere. It was so dry rotted and, and old. Some particle board oh, it particle was it was insane. And for some reason, that just I loved it. It it lit me up. And the crowd was going crazy. This table just exploded. And you know WWE it folds in. This table blew up. And so that match too was pretty good. Let's see. Uh, what is your favorite moment that you have had so far in professional wrestling? Man, man, man. Uh, I got a few of them too. Uh, the first time I ever worked out of state was was amazing. It was part of the Fanatics. Uh, myself and Jay Andrews, we worked in Mississippi, worked in Mississippi. He was hated by the company I worked for. I come back from my rag and uh, me and him run a few shows together. It was like, hey, why don't we make a tag team? I made a tag team and uh, finally got a booking outside of the state. Went and worked the show in Alabama, and uh, I thought we was, oh, we're big time now. We, we ain't just in Mississippi. We travel. Yeah, we travel. So that was great. Uh, man, I, don't, I, I can't really, I've had so many highs. Um, running my show, the, my first show by myself, I drew like 35 people, and the last show I run, having from 35, to packing the building out 300 where it wouldn't hold no more it was a, a high for me too. Uh, I mean, you go from 35 to 300. Oh, no, I agree. That's, I mean, it took two years, course. but I only run like once every, you know, every other month. Yep. And I, I'd say that's pretty good for Mississippi. Well, let me ask you on a booking level, this has nothing to do with anything I got written down, but did you enjoy the keeping the story thing going or was that outside of your comfort zone? I enjoy, I bring some, I, I eat, sleep, and breathe this. Most of us do. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I go to sleep, it's 
running through my mind, something about wrestling. Maybe not a show I'm doing, maybe something I read or something I saw. So if you don't have that creativity in you somewhere where you, and it may not be worth a crap. Any idea I might have may not be worth a crap. But to me, it's awesome just to be able to sit and think, man, like, oh, everybody does it in WWE. Oh, they could have did that so much yeah. better. Hey, oh, you know, yeah. Vince is a multimillionaire because he knows what he's doing. But uh, I enjoy storylines. I don't enjoy the work that goes into being a booker and promoter. I mean, promoting shows, trying to get people in there from 35 to 300 took me a lot of work. Hitting, putting flyers out, uh, you know, mouth to mouth with people. It's, it's just, a, it's a pain. It really is a pain. Setting a ring up. That's not me. I'd rather grab my bag and go. Hey, guys. Nice to see you. Yeah, I'm glad. Hey, glad you got me on your show. I, I can't handle it. I, hats off to the guys. Well, that, better than booking, huh? Uh, hats off to the guys that continue to book. All right, cool. I'm just curious about your opinion. I had not had anybody but uh, Jay Andrews is a booker. So. Jay's a great booker. Cool. My opinion, I think he's excellent. Uh, give me a wrestling story, funny, sad, anything personal. <coughs> you ain't got to knock nobody, just tell me a story. We talked about this on the, the first tape. We're going to talk about it again. He, he better laugh this time because he was involved in this. So we get to Battle Zone, and uh, me and Brian Robert were in the Mississippi Thrillers. Well, he had just turned on me, turned heel. So we were going to do this best of seven, nine, whatever, whatever it was. And the stipulation was if you – if you won the match, you got to pick stipulation for the next match. So the first match was a boxing match. So we had brainstormed and brainstormed and brainstormed. We was going to let Brian Robin go over. Now, it's boxing. And I'm thinking, I want him to, to knock me out. It, it's, shoot, knock me out. Okay, you, you're going to let him knock you out. Yeah, I'm going to, you know, we'll, we'll go a little bit. And when the time's right, everything you got, knock me out. If you, if you, you know, you can't knock me out. I'll sell it, but I want you to hit me with everything you got. You should, you should be able to knock me out. It's a grown man. So we get in the locker room, and we're setting this up like a legit boxing match. I got uh, Jesse Dalton and uh, Psycho in my corner, my cut man. He's got Chris Black, Eric Black, um, and Pharaoh Funk is the referee. We got shorts on, mouthpiece, gloves, the whole nine yards. And uh, we're in the locker room beforehand. There's this guy by the name of Logan Creed. Who I heard used to do tough men, so he's he's all like, oh y'all better beat the mess out of each other. That's what you're supposed to do. So okay, so we go out there, we're in the match, and I get the upper hand on him. I'm playing around, hitting him a couple, a little bit, and uh, about the second or third round, I said, okay, give it back to me. He starts tagging me, tagging me. I'm like, all right, hit me hard. Boom. I'm like, come on, man, you know you gotta start laying these on me. Boom, boom, he's hitting me, round ends. Pharaoh comes over and check. I'm like, hey, man, tell him. He's got to hit me now. I want these people to believe he's, you know, laying on me. Okay. Next round starts. I get him a couple times, a little love taps. I'm like, all right, dude, hit me. <clears throat> he's hitting me. Boom, boom. And I'm sticking my head out there, and he's hitting me. Boom. I'm like, hit me, dude. Please hit me. And he's swinging, and he's in tears. That's all I got. Boom, as hard as he can. And he's hit me, and I'm looking at Pharaoh like, oh, crap. You know, this ain't going to work. Everything he's got, every, all the man in him, boom, he's hitting me. We go back to the corner. I'm like, dude, <clears throat> tell him to load the glove. If he doesn't knock me out, mm -hmm. I'll fake it. I'll, I'll sell it. Yes. I'll go down. Okay. So we go back out. I, I throw a couple. I'm like, all right. So he loads it up. Boom, hits me. I was like, damn it, man. And I go to fall. As I'm falling, he catches me. And he stands me back up, and I'm like, what are you doing? Everything he's got again. Boom, I go to fall. He stops me again and stands me back up. And I just look at him. I'm like, what are you doing? As hard as he can again, right in the face. And I just stood there and looked at him. And he was like, oh, shit. This is a loaded glove, nuts, glove, everything. And he's like, oh, shit. And I swing. And as I'm swinging, he's ducking. And I graze his nose. He hits the ground. And I'm over, and I'm like, you getting back up? Nope. And I was like, oh, that's the end of the match. <laughs> well, and the whole time we're doing this, Psycho's in my corner talking about, you a, uh, you know, a wuss, if you don't knock him out, you a wuss. I'm like, dude, I can't do that. I don't want to mess the show up. We got this line, uh, laid out. Oh, you a wuss if you don't knock him out. So I guess Rival thought that I did it intentionally. But no, we've had this argument. And everybody there knows, 
he stopped me from falling two times. Yeah. So I got kind of irritated. And, uh, I thought the first one was kind of cool, but the second one didn't make a lick well, of sense. Well, I was, I was pissed by then. And yeah. then, then we get uh, in the back and Logan Creed's rolling in the chair laughing about to bust a gut because what just took place. I knew who, uh, he knew who was supposed to win. Yeah, it was. And that ain't what happened. So, yeah. I heard Logan used to uh, do tough men for cases of beer. Yep. I know it for a fact. Well, I'll just buy him a case of beer. Yeah, I, don't I, no more, I don't want no more boxing. No, I heard him tell. He don't either. <laughs> well, uh, what do you think of TV wrestling? The good of it and the bad of it? What do I think? We said this a minute ago. You could say it as a wrestler. You could say it's your right. It's freedom of speech is U.S. Hey, but uh, you can bash events all you want about how good or how bad it is. If you turn to it to watch it, He's did what he was supposed to do. It's all about ratings, and he's getting his ratings, so the sponsors are paying him money. I'll turn it on, and if somebody comes across it I want to see, I'll stop. Uh, other than that, I'll fast forward it. There's a little too much talking for me, but, but whatever. I, I'm watching it every Monday and every Thursday night. TNA, I don't get the channel, so I don't get to watch that as much. I, I do watch a lot of the network. I watch some old AWA and Mid-South stuff. I watch that. Uh, me and Jay Andrews talk probably two or three hours a day in 15 minute, five minutes perks. And talk about professional wrestling. I love indie wrestling. I'm a big PWG fan as much as the indie world and hates PWG or the, they say it's killing it because there's no yeah, really psychology, but that's what those fans want to see, and I enjoy and those. Oh, dude, they're some time. of the best athletes. Them guys doing insane Ooh. things, and uh, I think Candice LeRae is a beast, man. I want to work Candice and Joey so bad. I, yeah. I'll take the nut plex or whatever we got to do, you know, whatever. Uh, so I still enjoy wrestling as a whole. Uh, I got a nephew who adores me and adores professional wrestling, so I get to sit like my dad did with me with my nephew and, oh, John Cena, as much as I don't like watching John Cena work, but I'm in it for him, so I still love him. Well, you a booker, if you could wrestle one match from any company, any time, you got to the door, you're going back in time, when you're going, you don't need wheels, book me a match. Me in a match with somebody? You in a match. I want any time there. I want WCW Conspiracy Theory, Chris Jericho, and me from two years ago when I was uh, balls to the wall. Uh, that'd be my dream match. But that's got to be Conspiracy Theory, Chris Jericho. Either that or, or Sue. Four years ago, Chris Jericho was pretty good too. It's, yeah. It's like Chris Jericho stuff. either way. I always like his heel stuff better than his face stuff. It's good. The, the stuff when he come back, like uh, from the, what do you say he took it off of? the. We talked to goats or whatever the hell that movie was. Uh, uh, Men who stare at goats. That's it. Uh, he yeah. said he took the whole gimmick from that guy. Uh, I thought that was excellent. He did great. And even Jerry's show was great. Yeah, I like that. It was kind of hokey, but it was pretty cool for them too. I have. I guess my uh, wife calls it a a male crush on Chris Jericho. Yeah, yeah. It's disturbing. All right. <laughs> what is your favorite company to wrestle for and why? Uh. Pro Wrestling Ego is my favorite company. It's, it's about all I do nowadays. I, I take bookings outside the state. I'll go to Alabama, Georgia, Florida every few months. But I'm having little issues with my knee and trying to let it. Don't do that, bro. <laughs> trying to let it cool down. Uh, I'm actually giving the testimony after the show tonight. Wrestling used to consume my life. It was, it was all I thought about. I still pretty much all I think about now, but. I got a good woman now. I've run through two wives before her because of professional wrestling and lost them. I met her wrestling. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I saw all I ever wanted was a woman to support me wrestling. And once I got that, I was like, wrestling's not that important anymore. So, I mean, I love it. So, PWG gives me an opportunity to, to work once a month. I get to rest my knee, and he books me doing good stuff, man. So, PWG's it. PWG, Pro PWE. Pro See, I'm thinking. Let's, let's go to PWG too. Book me. I'm down. Let's go. Pro wrestling. Trying to get booked. Yeah, trying to get booked. All right.
what kind of wrestling do you like to watch? Old school, new school, lucha, strong style, southern, what you like? I'm I'm a I'm a nineties WCW Lucha guy mm -hmm. and a two thousand four, five, six X Division guy, which is I guess it would be the same thing. But uh, that's probably my favorite stuff to watch. I like comedy wrestling, like the Candace and Joey, the world's cutest tag team, in moderation. And it's it, they have to be working somebody that, that it meshes well with. Uh, I love Colt stuff. Colt yeah. Banner is it's hilarious, but he can go too. So it's a mixture of everything. But I would say Lucha stuff is, is my favorite. Uh, let's see. Uh, would you rather wrestle as a heel or a face? What side of your persona do you like to show the faces? I've been doing this for 13 years, and I still have no answer to who the renegade Joey Abel is. Renegade Joey Abel is me. I, I'm not a hooping, hollering, running, jumping. I mean, I slap kids' hands or whatever. Um, I'd prefer to be heel mm -hmm. just because I get to do more in the match and control a little bit more of the match. So I would say heel, uh, I guess even though I don't high five and slap hands and do what all that mess, the kids love me too. So I, I do good as a face and I'm mostly a face, but I prefer heel. Okay. Uh, well, who is your favorite person to wrestle? Like you're gonna book an indie show and it's you and them, who are you gonna book with you? Um, we talked about the best matches earlier. Yeah. But if I, if, if I had to book a show and I could get him to come wrestle would be Brian Rival. I started with him. I probably had my, maybe not my best matches, but my better series of matches with Brian Rival. Uh, we were roommates. We started wrestling together. He's my uh, kid's godfather, uh, my best friend for a long time. So if I had to book it and I could get him to bring his butt back, uh, it would. But I want flamboyant Golden Boy Brian Rival with the robe and the Spang, gold spanks. I want the flare, the heel promo and all that. Me face, him heel, I want Rival. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so I know you've done both. You talked about singles and tag. Mm -hmm. What do you prefer doing, singles wrestling or tag wrestling? Tag wrestling any day. Uh, Mississippi Throws, me and Rival. The Fanatics, me and Jay Andrews, the Painkiller Express, me and uh, Tommy Morrow and Jesse Dalton, and then me and Jesse Dalton as the Widowmakers. Um, word is there's a new tag team I'm about to get in the mix with. I uh, won't tell you much about that. We'll let you find out about that. Come, I love tag team wrestling. I love the dynamics, the the angles you can take with just so, you know, the extra people in there, the stuff you can do. I, I prefer tag team wrestling any day. I got a, before I get to the last two questions, I got a question for you. I was asked by Mr. Logan Creed to ask you, when he was going to the top rope, I was told there was something you were thinking. What were you thinking? Me and the Agents of Justice, Logan Creed, Oblivion, and Jesse Dalton. As he's going to the top rope, me and Jesse Dalton, been my trainer, tag team partner. I look at Jesse Dalton, and he's looking at me from across the ring like, what in the hell is he doing? And I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, what's Logan doing? And then he, he went, he wobbled, or he wobbled a little bit, uh, and caught himself. I'm like, okay, he's going to get out. Now he kept going. And me and Jesse, without any words, can look at each other. And you, you got that look. It's like, this, that's so big. crazy to say. I don't know what he's doing up there. He falls, and I'm like, oh, he's selling that good. He's selling real good. And oh, no, he wasn't selling it at all. He towards ACL, ACL, MCL? ACL, MCL. So yeah, so if you ever had that moment when you can look at another human being and without any words, like, can know everything that the person's thinking, that's what was going on in that moment. Like, why is Logan Creed? He weighs, what, 300 pounds? Close to 300 pounds? Why is he going to the top rope? I've never seen Logan Creed go to the top rope in my life. My very first tag team partner ever was Logan Creed, and he had a duck or a camel, and I don't I had bull peanuts. I can't remember if it was a duck or a camel. He had both. And we, we tagged against the A&M Express, and I had a whole talk show segment. He was my first guest, and I had drums. It was, that Logan Creed was my first tag team partner, so I know he never went to the top rope, so I don't know what he was doing on the top rope then. He was pulling a flare. I was just told there was a mental conversation going on between you and Jesse. Oh, it was happening. <laughs> this still happened later on that night. We were leaning each other like, did that happen? Like, like we in a daze here, but it happened.
get well of you. Well, uh, what is the move that you use to put most of your people away, and what do you call it? Man, I don't have a clue. I've used a plethora of things. What I'm using now, I guess Seamus calls it the bro kick. It's just a bit, I don't do all that. I'm as white as Seamus, though, so I could probably get away with it. Uh, just a big running, jumping, super kick, big boot kind of. I like, yeah. It's kind of awesome because I'm short and chunky and I can still get my foot up to a six foot two or three guy's face. I think it's pretty, pretty agile. Pretty impressive. Right. Well, uh, the final qu uh, question is, who's been there in professional wrestling on a personal level if you'd like to think of your opportunity? There's been a few people there, but you know, for professional wrestling is kind of cut for You can be friends one day and enemies the next day. But over the past, we say four years, she's my wife now, but uh, it was Haley, Fan Haley Phillips. She uh, renewed my my faith in life, I just didn't care anymore. I was, not that I wanted to die or anything, but I was just, whatever happens, happens, you know. So, um, she motivates me to keep going. Uh, I got gimmicks now because of her. I never had no gimmicks. I didn't think about that. I remember. But you know, let's sell gimmicks. I gotta have something to do with the show. So we, we do all that. And it's actually like, I'm a professional wrestler now. It, it, it's like a business now to me. I get booked, go to shows. She drives the majority of the way. She never complains. She, she's amazing, man. Uh, that, that's probably been the person that's been there for me the most. I, I've had a bunch of others. Me and Jay Andrews had a falling out. He's been there a pretty good bit for me. Uh, this past year, two years, Monty Warbucks has been there tremendously for me. And even recently, uh, the man I got to face tonight, he's uh, kind of hit a little dark spur, but Paul Wright and, and me had started chit-chatting a good bit. so. But, but Haley was definitely number one. Right. Well, that's cool, brother. I appreciate you being on Life in the Headlock. Appreciate it. And I call this Life in the Headlock because life's like a headlock. Real tight or real loose when you work no around. Doubt. No Which doubt. Which one you got right now? You got a loose and working around? Oh, I'm loose right now, man. Right. Yes, loose. Well, thank you very much for being on here. Don't mess with Logan Creed in this case of beer. That's right. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Watch, I'll be able to keep this one.